All right, fellas, we've done a brilliant job this season. Just got this final coming up. Havelock North, we beat them 5 0 about a month or so ago. They're not used to big games. Let's just make the most of our big match experience and win another trophy to complete the set yet again. Give me all those trophies, baby. Give it to me. Give it to me, baby. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 154 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with both the All Whites and Cashmere Technical. Hope you're doing well. And come up today, we've got the National League Grand Final for 2038. And if you can't tell from what you see on screen and probably the thumbnail as well, we are taking on Havelock North. So we're looking forward to that as well as the end of season review, transfer budgets, all that sort of stuff. Then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up. On the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but yesterday played our second international window in a row with the all whites taking on brazil and australia yet again for the soccer issues so if you missed that one i'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner in between then and the previous window bunch of wins in the national league championship with cashmere tech and we continued a perfect record, albeit did leave it until the second half there to overcome the Phoenix Reserve 6-2 in our final game. But it did mean that ruled them out of making the final. And to be fair, have locked north did it themselves. A 3-0 win over East Coast Bays did mean that Western Suburbs 4-2 win over Nelson Suburbs would not matter. They sneak in over them by a point. So it does mean that have locked north will be with us in the OFC Champions League next season. A bit of a new team for us to take on here at Kashmir Tech in the big games here in New Zealand. To be fair, they have been building over the last couple of seasons. They've been pretty close to winning the Central League this year, only finished third, but they have been doing a decent job with some of our former players that they have pinched off us, and this time they just do enough to make their way through to the National League final. But to be fair, we did beat them 5 0 before that window yesterday. So based on that, this should definitely be a game that we are winning, as is the case usually here with Kashmir Technical, especially in New Zealand competitions. And also, we go into this one with pretty much a full strength squad here at Kashmir Technical. The only injury, Andy Roberts still out with a broken angle. He'll be right for next season. Also, Jonas Otto is back, but still working his way back from injury. And we've got all these lovely green links here with our squad. If we bought Otto in, that would stuff up our foreign limit. So I think we'll just leave him off until next season and he can replace Chris Greenidge then. Because of course, Chris Greenidge is about to play his last game for us here with Kashmir Tech, a good left winger, the backup for the All Whites. He's on his way to the Brisbane Roar off the back of this game. And also, we are going to be losing Asana Diop. Have sold him to the Newcastle Jets. That was for a fee of £30,000 these days. A backup with the All Whites, just like Chris Greenwich. Didn't think sending him off to the A League, where hopefully he can be a regular starter, might be better for his development instead of sitting behind someone like our Brazilian left back in Sousa. So, a couple of players here who might get their last appearances for Kashmir Tech. Hopefully, we can send them off in a good way, as we should, taking on Havelock North. Bit of a fairy tale story for these guys, but hopefully, we can bring it to an end here in this National League Grand Final and pick it up yet again. And here are the team sheets for the 2038 National League final here in New Zealand. First up, us, as you ran through before, Greenwich at left wing, but otherwise, that's our first choice 11. There are Havelock North in decent form, obviously, making the final, and they are going with a 4-4-2. Cooper up front, a former player, but to be fair, did spend most of his time here in the B team, but hopefully can win the National League final yet again. And just shot the five-minute mark, first highlight here of this final. It is a goal kick in our favours, Havelock North maybe on the front, but early they are in the white while we're in the yellow tops for this one. Otherwise, the colours would be pretty similar, but we keep the ball here nicely down our left-hand side. Sousa finds Chris Greenwich, as I said, one of a few players making his final appearance here. For Kashmir, Tech tries to play that ball up front. I think that would have been his resumers, but just can't quite get there before Yanni Kani. I think that name is for Havelock North and Gold. But good win there in the field from that deep clearance. Plays it for to Zoomers, does Lorenzo Janssen, and he'll pick up a goal. Well, easy is for Zoomers. It's a brilliant start. Just five minutes in, he bags a goal to make it 1-0. To be fair, last time I think we played Havelock North, he might have scored a hat-trick, but it's Corona there. Who wins in the air? Clark. Down to Janssen and Zoomers. A perfectly timed run on the end of that well-placed ball 
from Jansen, puts it away, and we won the lap early. And going for just over 10 minutes off back of that opening goal, again, it looks like here we might be on the attack with a thrown inside of the final third. Greenidge picks out Jansen inside the box, tries to curve that one bottom right corner, does like a goal in big games, so but unfortunately, that one just off target. But as you can see, stats wise, we are slightly on the front foot, and thankfully, still one in front. And not too off the back of that previous highlight, another frame for us here inside of the final third. Debit into Carly goes back out there, and now Carly gets that back from Clark. Takes on the shot, and he'll find the bottom left corner about the other side, what we did before with Lorenzo Jansen. But this time, Waleed Carly, who I'd say, should be player of the season. He's been superb for us this year at Kashmir Tech, as per usual. But he puts that one away in early stages. We grab a cushion goal just past the halfway point of the first half to make it 2-0. And we're just made way into the last 10 minutes of this first half. And yet again, a highlight starting here with a throw in sight of the final third. The ball gets played in there to Ezra Zoomers, but Toure brings him down from behind. And he'll get a chance here to get himself on a hat trick from the penalty spot. And really, if we score this, this should put this final away. In the first half, Yanni Kani there did go the right way, but Zoomers beats him nice and low and hard that one. Into the bottom left corner, that's his 31st goal this season. So if here, he might be getting close to breaking a league record with numbers like that. Here's Resumers gets himself on a hat trick and 3 0 before half time. This final going very nicely indeed. If this is what Havelock North are like, Champions League next season might not be too difficult. But beefier for a club like them, that could help them with their stature, maybe a little bit more money by making this final. It could help them out. But first half, well and truly on the front foot. To be fair, they have had some decent chances with high XG, but thankfully for us, None of them found their way into the back of the net. Everyone out there doing a decent job, so no changes needed with a 3-0 lead in this National League final. And pretty early stages here of the second half, and there's an early highlight here as a corner to have Lock North. They try and go near post, thankfully Carly gets that one away. And now Zoomers puts that one in there. Thompson loose touch in Greenwich. He'll find Johnson. Good chance for us here to do something on the counter-attack. Back out there to Greenwich, who starts to make his way for what can he do in his final appearance as a Kashmir Tech player, gets the ball back there from Sousa, just takes his time before playing it back there to the Brazilians. A bit of a long range worm burner, but beats Yanni Kani. That makes it 4 0. This is well and truly over early stages of the second half, and maybe going to score more goals than we did against these guys in that game before the last international window, our league phase game against these guys in this competition. But Sousa still a fair bit of work to do once he got that ball back. From Chris Greens, but that's a decent finish there from our star left back here at Kashmir Tech. That's the reason we are getting rid of a son of Diop as well. Might give him some game time off the bench, give him a farewell with the scoreline the way it is. But there is a highlight here for Havelock North off the back of that chance. But Sifuentes comes up with a very good save to keep that one out the back of net. Good chance there from point blank range, but thankfully kept nice and solid, hard in the reach, and put that out for a corner just past that post, and from that corner have Lock North not up too much, albeit they put that ball back into the mixer, but Einerson is offside, that won't count, still 4-0 Kashmir. And just about to make our way into the last 20 minutes of this game, and I think it's time for us here to start thinking about making some subs, Harrison Debenham among going fairly on a 6.5, so Phil Wilson can get some game time, an under 20 player to be fair, that's going to be a big issue for us next season because both hosts Safa and Debenham are no longer under 20 and also will take off Sousa playing well. But Asana Diop, he can get some game time here. Also his last appearance for Kashmir Tech, still 4-0 with just over 20 left. And only a few minutes off back of those previous subs, now we're about to enter the last 15 minutes. So it's time for our final one. I think the player here that we can take off because the Hotman de Villiers, not too sure if we want to take off Chris Greenidge in his final game. And of course Zoomers is sitting on a hat trick. So I think Tristan Turner for Sam Clark is the sensible move. Still 4 0 with just over 15 minutes left. And only a couple of minutes on from that final sub, there is a big clearance there from the Havelock North goalkeeper. Osafa is there to tidy things up. Now Wilson plays a poor ball there. I think he was looking for Turner, but nowhere near him. Now Inerson plays that over for Cooper, our former B team player. And it's a lovely ball into the mixer for Tom Basilage, who puts that one home. Sifuentes had no idea what was going on there. And to be fair, Neither did our centre back, so they do grab a goal back there. Do have Lock North to be fair. That might save us some money with clean sheet bonuses, but that is actually some good reward for them. You'll see shortly the stats in this game aren't that bad. They've had about 12 shots, five on targets. The XG, they actually should have scored more goals than they have so far in this game, but thankfully we've been very efficient 
with our chances about to make our way into three minutes of added time, albeit another corner there for Havelock North, but Bustelage looking for a double. Can't put that one on the right side of the woodwork, and that was a pretty convincing win in the 2038 National League final, as you might expect, considering no Auckland City, no Western Suburbs. It was Havelock North to beat the Auckland City. Absolutely rubbish these days, almost got relegated from the Northern League. Stats wise, though, they weren't that bad, so maybe we're underestimating them a bit going into the Champions League, especially if they can strengthen going in to that competition next season. But that is another title for us here at Kashmir Tech off the back of a 4 1 win. So, another National League title for us there with Kashmir Tech, and maybe a bit of a psychological advantage as well going into the Champions League next season. We have Lock North are probably our biggest competitors, even though it's going to be their first time in that competition. But a couple of awards pop up before the end of season review, and these ones don't get included. First up, got the team of the year. As you can see, pretty much dominated here by our players. Sifuentes in goal, the back four, Susaho, Safa, Anderson, and Debenham. Both our wingers in Greenwich and Khaled. And both our strikers, even though Kamalo was a backup, apparently he did enough in those couple of appearances he had to make his way up front alongside Ezra Zuma. Somehow, Nathan Wilsner is in the subs. I didn't think he played this much this year. He's the backup to Lorenzo Janssen. Eight games, six goals, five in the league. Not the best numbers, I would think, but apparently he was awesome. He makes his way onto the bench there, while none of our other players do, but lots of players there in the National League Team of the Year here. At Kashmir, take alongside Cogman from Western Suburbs and Rodriguez from Manurewa, but going up a bit further, got the transfer budget for next season. The wage budget's 41k a week, and the transfer budget, 44k a week. So nothing too big to spend here at Kashmir Tech. That's definitely been the case ever since we did go back to being semi-pro after those couple of seasons when I joined the club, when they were professional with transfer budgets bigger than what we had back at AFC Auckland. A quick look at what that does to those budgets. A spare 2.8k a week, but to be fair, coming up shortly, have got the departures of Chris Greenidge and Asana Diops. That might help boost it up a little bit, but not too much spare budget to work with going into next season. And we've gone for another week or so, and it's now time for the end of season review here with Kashmir Tech for 2038. Of course, no all white stuff in this. Did the World Cup this year, which really was the big deal. Got knocked out, of course, in the round of 16 by Brazil on penalties, which was very frustrating, but still not a bad effort making our way into the top 20 of the world rings. That might pop up later on the manager timeline. But here are all the new signings that we did make. And apparently, Fernando Azorio was the best of them. 10 appearances, 11 goals, 5 assists to be fair when he played while Chris Greenidge was injured and also before the arrival of Jonas Otto Albert. He was injured for most of the time he was here as well. He did play very well, and with the departure of Greenidge, he should get a bit more game time next season if we do need to give a rest to Jonas Otto, who does look like he might be just a tad injury prone. But to be fair, most of our new signings here at Kashmir Tech did a good job. Mazzino, Prince Kamalo, Nathan Wilsner, Sousa Marquez, and Otto Albert in not very many games. All got good ratings. PA did a decent job, and Andy Roberts hasn't played for us yet. One game off the bench where he got injured for the Turtles because he broke his ankle. The transfers out, though, got rid of some half-decent players for some OK money. Alex Logan went to the Phoenix. Salcato to Marconi. Castro to South Melbourne. Evans to Oldham Athletic before he went on a free. Asana Diop went to Newcastle and Chris Greenidge to Brisbane. Those deals, of course, haven't gone through yet, but will do come the end of the season. So those were the transfers, and it was Osorio who will pick up signing of the season. National League, this was pretty comfy for us this season. Not too many close games. Won there against Nomads back in the Southern League, which was a little bit random. But apart from that, all these games resulted in wins by two or more goals. Did not drop a single point in the Southern League or the National League Championship, and we pick up the title Yet again, OFC Champions League, one draw there against Western Suburbs. Of course, that was the final, which we went on penalties after going down to 10 men in the first half. That really was their big chance to take a Champions League title off us, but they couldn't do it. Could the Bottlers from Proiru going up to the Chatham Cup won this very comfortably, capped off with a 10 0 win over Munurewa? Bit of a hiding. But to be fair, they did bounce back a few games later in the National League Championship and the Charity Cup. Won this at the start of the season, to be fair. That was a bit closer against Western Suburbs. 
a 2 1 win compared to, but I think it was a 5 2 win with a rotated squad in the National League Championship a bit later in the season. In fact, there it is. That was where our goal of the season came from. But before then, the biggest win, obviously, that 10 0 1 over Manurewa a couple of days ago in the Cherm Cup final. Apparently, the match, remember, 4 0 over Christchurch. No, I'm not too sure if that would count in a World Cup year. Probably one of our wins at that tournament. And the goal of the season was scoring that Western Suburbs win in the league phase of the National League Championship. And it was by Mazzino just before halftime. And here it is. It was one all at the stage. To be fair, before this as well, Western Suburbs did miss a penalty, but then scored from the subsequent highlight. But to be fair, wonderful work there from Mazzino. A good long run and puts it away from a tight angle. And that really got us on our way to a 5-2 win, albeit it did take us a little while actually to put these guys to bed in the last half hour or so, but that was a very convincing win, and it was quite good that one as well, with a rotation before that 10-0 smashing in the Chatham Cup final of Munray with the finances. Sponsorship's gone down, albeit it hasn't really, that's even broadcast revenue, that does make sense considering last year was a Club World Cup year with Cashmere Tech, but everything else has gone up, which is a bit surprising considering we've won more prize money, despite the fact that this year did not have a Club World Cup reputation Still only two stars here at Kashmir, taking the biggest shirt sellers. Zuma's Sifawentes Otto, despite only playing three games, I think it was, gets up there alongside Kamalo and Kali going forward for the best of them for this season. Most of this does make sense. The back four, and of course Sifawentes and Gold. If he's Sousa, gets in there over Diop. I suppose he did play more than him in the domestic games off the back of the OFC Champions League. The midfielder, Clark and Turner, both deep line playmakers, so that is a bit interesting. But to be fair, Louis Evans no longer here. And up front, we've got Carly Johnson and Azorio out left, and Zoom is up top, having been the top goal scorer of the season. But I think Carly should get this more goal contributions in games than Fernando Azorio. He was very good this season, but apparently Ezra Zoom is, is the player of the season. That's a bit of a cop out, I think, because Carly apparently does still qualify for young player of the season. You saw before. A couple of those other things. Ezra Zuma's top goal scorer of 31. Janssen most assists with 15. Most player of the matches, Carly with 6. That's why I thought as well as that rating, he might get the overall player of the season. Highest average rating though, Ezra Zuma's with a 7.7. But Carly and Osorio have 8.3 average ratings. Not too sure what's going on there. That might almost be a bug. And in terms of the record breakers, Zoomers, most league goals by a player in a season with 25. Most league appearances and goals now by a player, Janssen, for the club with 173 and 90. Still, by far, the best central attacking midfielder we can find here for Kashmir Tech. So we might get a chance next season to break the 200 appearance and 100 goal mark. And in terms of some other competition awards off back of that team of the year, of course, we picked up the manager of the year with an unbeaten season in New Zealand. Carly got the golden boot for the Chatham Cup. National League Player of the Year was also Carly. The reason I thought he'd get our Player of the Year. National League Golden Boot Zoomers and the OCL top goal scorer. That was Fernando Azorio. That was when he did shine. Going forward to history in the making. Picked up every trophy available here at Cashmere Tech this season. So good things. And just seeing what has changed here on the manager timeline. That's now 10 years in charge for us here. At Kashmir Tech, 700 matches with a 2-0 win over Otago Uni before we did pick up the OCL. And then during the World Cup, did make our way up the world rankings to what at that point was a high of 16th place in the world. To be fair, it is still a high drop down one place off back of the World Cup tournament. Off back of that, picked up a bunch of trophies and of course got manager of the year in an undefeated season. So to be fair, not too much getting added there. To that manager timeline, apart from the fact that we are now at a high ranking for the save with New Zealand. A quick look at what else is going on here in terms of the overall best 11 for the save once I can find it. And for some reason I can't, which is a bit weird. So no update there on the overall best 11 for our time here at Kashmir Tech. And going forward, only one click off the back of that end of season review. Something interesting here to end today's episode on because next season we are renting Rugby League Park, which of course is the big arena there in Christchurch currently. Of course, they are building one in real life, but that is an 18,000 seat stadium. So that actually could help us out quite a bit financially if the rent isn't too much. That's of course where the Crusaders play in real life, the rugby team down there in Christchurch. So that is a good stadium for us, but the reason is that they are expanding. It looks like the Sean Does FM Arena. 
supply about 3,000 seats, and that will cost us 3.3 million pounds. And our finances, I didn't think could cope with that. So that is an interesting idea there from the board. Not too sure about that one. So we're going to be playing, though, in a bigger stadium next season. Hopefully that might help us get a bit more money in terms of gate receipts here at Kashmir Tech. But that will do it for today's episode. Very easy win there in the National League Grand Final over Havelock North. We'll come back tomorrow and start to defend the OCL in 2039 in the group stage. If you enjoyed today, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well until tomorrow for the OCL group stage and also maybe a couple of transfers we definitely need to find some under 20 players but to be fair don't need them until the start of the domestic season in New Zealand but until tomorrow for the start of 2039 in the save thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and I'll see you then cheers